Hey all, Eric Christensen here, pharmacist, owner, creator at meded101.com. Just wanted to uh, give you my top five clinically relevant updates uh, from the beers criteria, which was released uh, within the, the past year here. Uh, there are multiple updates. I go through them uh, in our entire uh, BCGP uh, study material. So you can uh, find that and I'll give you a link uh, at the end that you can go uh, check that out. But let's get into them. So one of the big changes I wanted to talk about was H2 blockers. Uh, this has been a lessening of the restriction. So historically they were uh, incorporated into the beers criteria they can accumulate, uh, particularly in uh, renal with poor renal function, and cause some uh, cognitive CNS confusion type changes in some patients. Uh, the criteria, the committee found that uh, there really isn't a ton of evidence to uh, continue to support that recommendation, and at least what I could see in clinical practice was. Uh, clinicians going straight to the PPIs. And there's a whole bunch of risks associated with PPIs, which were also added. Uh, I'm not going to cover that further here. I cover that in the full uh, video uh, under the BCGP course. But um, because of some of those risks of, of PPIs now, uh, H2 blockers maybe don't look uh, quite as bad comparatively. So um, with that said, H2 blockers, that restriction has, has kind of been lessened a little bit. Uh, in patients with uh, kind of that active delirium, patients that are still uh, struggling as far as, you know, confusion and, and having that short-term delirium, uh, these drugs are still recommended uh, to avoid. Um, but as far as, you know, patients with dementia, they're stable, no issues, uh, they have taken away uh, that recommendation to avoid there. So kind of a lessening of the uh, restrictions in the recommendations from the beers criteria. Opioid drug interactions, uh, benzodiazepines, uh, pregabalin, gabapentin can increase the risk uh, of overdose symptoms as well as respiratory depression and ultimately uh, death in overdose. Uh, important to recognize other factors as well, uh, you know, respiratory disorders, obesity, sleep apnea, all those things can play a role certainly at increasing that risk of respiratory depression from opioids, um, but these interactions were certainly added to the uh, beers criteria. Antibiotics, uh, trimethoprim sulfa, that in combination with other drugs, ACEs, ARBs, uh, spironolactone can raise potassium levels. So something to really uh, look out for there. I, I talk about that a little bit further and some strategies to uh, try to prevent that, but definitely uh, something to be aware of there. Hyponatremia. So if you remember tramadol's mechanism of action, it does have some SNRI type activity. And with that... If you remember SSRIs, SNRIs, they can contribute to SIADH-related uh, syndrome, which can lead to hyponatremia. So again, keeping an eye on that sodium, if you know a patient that's got hyponatremia, uh, take a peek, make sure tramadol amongst other agents, SSRIs, SNRIs, uh, carbamazepine, and so on and so forth, um, make sure some of those agents aren't uh, contributing, worsening that hyponatremia. And one last clinically relevant, I think, uh, update from the uh, Beers Criteria update in 2019, uh, glomeparide has now been added. So this is sulfonylurea type medication. Uh, lots of potential downsides with sulfonylureas as a class. Uh, weight gain and hypoglycemia can be really problematic in our geriatric patient population. Uh, but glomeparide specifically, uh, as well as gliburide, uh, can prolong uh, that hypoglycemic episode, or we've got that risk for that. So if asulfonylurea is used, uh, glipizide is probably least likely to cause uh, prolonged hypoglycemia versus uh, the other agents. 
again, lots of downsides to Stefan here is uh, probably not the uh, greatest, safest drug in general. But if one's going to be used at this point, it looks like glipizide has the um, best evidence of safety in our geriatric patient population. So I go into much greater detail uh, with our BCGP study material. Uh, I'm also thinking about adding uh, that extended video. It's about 35 minutes um, regarding beers and, and stop start criteria uh, into our other uh, study material as well. So uh, that update will be in play uh, in October, November timeframe at the latest. So um, definitely uh, keep tabs on that. If you've got an all-access pass already, you will, uh, and you're within your window still, you will automatically uh, get those updates in uh, October, November when I get everything finalized and released. So uh, lots of big things coming, uh, lots of updates uh, coming. Again, if you've already got access, uh, you uh, will get those uh, available to you as they uh, become available. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, feel free to subscribe uh, to us on YouTube there, as well as take away your uh, free top 30 mistakes uh, PDF from meded101.com as well, simply for uh, subscribing to follow the blog. Thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.